Good afternoon and welcome to Riverside Christian Academy's baccalaureate ceremony and uh, we're so grateful for all of you being here and so glad that everybody arrived just on time, Philip. And uh, we want to say a special congratulations to our graduating seniors and to their families and we know how much this means to you guys. This is a rite of passage and so uh, this is about students and children becoming adults and uh, we're grateful for this opportunity to celebrate and I don't think I have to explain to any of you how well thought this class is uh, of faculty, of fellow students, uh, the students and, and the community think so very highly of this class. They have been fantastic ambassadors uh, for Riverside Christian Academy in this community and also, of course, ambassadors for our Lord. So we're so grateful for them and proud of them and, and know that you are too. Uh, we also want to say thank you to the Washington Street Church of Christ for allowing us this space for this occasion, and we want to say a special congratulations to Brother Jim Black. Uh, today he is concluding his formal ministry here at Washington Street, and so this morning had a packed house of folks uh, celebrating him and, and worshiping the Lord, and so we want to say congratulations to Jim, to a job well done, uh, over 20 years of service to this congregation, and so I know he will be greatly missed, but he will be around. So he, he's still got the same address. Today is about the foundation of faith that our students have received at Riverside Christian Academy. Faith is so important. Not only while children are young and students are young, but as they transition into adulthood and into life. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And it's only through a full faith that we can actually understand the world around us. Augustine said, it is, I believe, therefore I understand, echoing the words of Hebrews 11.3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That says it all, doesn't it? That through the prism and lens of faith, we can truly understand our world and ourselves. And without that faith, it's impossible to please God and to even really know who we are. My favorite quote and probably the quintessential quote of C.S. Lewis is that quote where he says, I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun is risen, not only because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. And it is our prayer today and our hope that we have given our students, our seniors, our graduates that foundation of faith where they can clearly see the world through that lens of faith that's so important. Today is also about blessing. Today, the shepherds of the Riverside Church of Christ will pronounce a, the priestly blessing on the students and on their families. And of course, a blessing is something that goes all the way back to Genesis when fathers would bless their sons, priests would bless the congregation of Israel. And of course, our Lord blessed those in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So today is about faith and about blessing. We bless these students and pray for their futures. Will you please stand and welcome our graduating seniors.
love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Mark 12, 30. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. We'll be singing a few songs this morning uh, that have been requested by these folks down front here. Uh, some out of the book. First one will be out of the book, number 714. That's 714. You may not need it. I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. City, but we're not doing that one today, guys. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, if you're not familiar with the song, actually, it's just opposite. The men on, are on, on the top line, and the ladies are on the bottom line, all the way through. So the men do the leading at the beginning, and the women echo, and then we get down to about right here, and if you're not familiar, just kind of jump in there and hang on, uh, because it's Most everybody knows it up. You are holy. You are mighty. You are worthy. Worthy of praise. I will follow. I will live.
Prince of Peace, and I will live my life for you. Good afternoon. My name is Philip Cooper. This is Rick McCauley, Shepherds at Riverside Church of Christ. And it is certainly a blessing and an honor to be with you guys this afternoon. Um, before we get started, I want to give a little just a brief history for those, mo most of you know, uh, some of you may not know, uh, that there was a church, uh, actually started out as Faithful Community, I believe, was the name, years ago planted the seed, or God planted the seed in the hearts uh, of those uh, folks that started that church, and the outcome of that was Riverside Christian Academy. But even before that, decades before that, many were praying for a Christian school in this community, and God brought it to be. Uh, and everyone who has been involved in that at the beginning and since uh, knows that it's not necessarily the people so much as it is God's blessing and his power through the weakness of so many who are willing to offer their time and their service to help create what you guys have experienced over the last few years. And it's really kind of cool as I look around the room here to see so many faces of some that have been through and passed on into the next chapters of life. And I know that no matter how much you appreciate your experience at Riverside so far, it will only sweeten as you age, as I believe those who have come before you can also uh, say. Um, so if, if it's something what we like to do, it's a tradition uh, to offer this blessing to you guys today. And I'm going to let Rick come up uh, and explain a little bit about that. What we'll do is uh, explain to you what we're about to do, and that is a, a blessing. And as uh, Lawless mentioned, it's it's a blessing actually that uh, God gave to Moses, gave to Aaron, and, and you know the Israelites. And and being that we as a Christian people have been grafted in, adopted, it's a blessing that applies to us as Christians too. And what we're going to hand out, and what when the parents come out, uh, come up and hand to the. Uh, graduates, would it be a sheet that has scripture and in place of you or the or whatever it will have their name in that place. So the scriptures that will be theirs will be personalized if you will. And uh, then we'll uh, pass on the blessing and what we're going to do now is just read to you the scriptures and use the name of the word graduates. And in that place will be the name of that individual student. This has been personalized in scripture. Uh, and after uh, we finish the reading of the scriptures, um, Brother Terry will have the song. So we're going to read those scriptures now. <coughs> Father God, may the graduates listen to your words and what you command. May they listen to wisdom and set their minds on understanding. May the graduates cry out for insight and beg for understanding. May they search for them as one would for silver or seek them like hidden treasure. Then they will understand what it means to respect and fear the Lord. And they will find that they know you, God. For only you, Lord, give wisdom, knowledge, for you grant a treasure of common sense to the honest. You are a shield to those who walk in integrity. You make sure that justice is done. You protect those who are faithful to you. Then the graduates will understand what is honest, fair, and just, and what is the good and right thing to do. Wisdom will come into their minds, and knowledge will fill them with joy. Wise choices will protect the graduates. Understanding will keep them safe. Proverbs 2. Commit everything you do to the Lord, graduates. Trust him, and he will help you. 
Then your goodness will shine like the sun, and your fairness like the noonday sun. Be quiet and patient before God. Be prayerfully before Him. Don't be worried about those who prosper or those who succeed in their evil plans. Psalm 37. We ask God to give the graduates a complete knowledge of his will and to give them spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you, the graduate, will live, always honor and please the Lord, and your life will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that the graduates will be strengthened with all God's glorious power so that they will have all the endurance and patience they need. May they be filled with joy, always thinking of Father, where his children are enabled to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he rescues them from the kingdom of darkness and transfers them into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom and forgives us our sins. Colossians 1.9. May God give you graduate strength to put away all bitterness and anger and wrath and shouting and slander along with all malice. And may you be kind and compassionate to others, forgiving them just as God in Christ also forgives you, graduates. Ephesians 4, 31, 32. We pray that the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and earth, will from his unlimited resources give the graduates power through his spirit so that they will be strong in their inner selves that Christ may dwell in the graduates hearts through faith as they trust in him and their roots will go down into God's love and keep them strong we ask that the graduates may have the power to understand as all God's people should how wide, how long how high and how deep his love is that they may experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then the graduates will be made complete in all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Ephesians 3, 14 to 19. Now we give all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within the graduates, to accomplish infinitely more than they might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing that we'll bestow individually, the Lord bless the graduates and keep them. The Lord make his face shine upon the graduates and be gracious to them. The Lord turn his face toward the graduates and give them peace. Brother Perry. In our uh, insert, we'll have uh, We Will Glorify. Uh, we sing the songs, the graduates will line up, the parents will line up uh, as we're singing these verses. If we need to, we'll go back to verse one because everybody gets all lined up there. We will glorify. <laughs> We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him. We will worship him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord of love, the universe. All praise to him we give. So hallelujah to the King of kings. We will glory. 
Michael Boyd Black. The Lord bless Michael and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on Michael and be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Michael and give him peace. Ethan Joshua Clifford. Bless Ethan and keep him. The Lord make his face shine upon Ethan and be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Ethan and give him peace. Campbell Amelia Croft. The Lord bless Campbell and keep her. The Lord make his face shine on Campbell and be gracious to her. Lord, turn his face toward Campbell and give her peace. Zachary David Dixon. Lord, bless Zach. Keep him. Lord, make his face shine on Zach and be gracious to him. Lord, turn his face toward Zach. Callie Elizabeth Eldridge. The Lord bless Callie and keep her. The Lord make his face shine on Callie and be gracious to her. The Lord turn his face toward Callie and give her peace. Caroline Grace Hall. Lord bless Caroline and keep her up. Lord make his face shine on Caroline and be gracious to her. Lord turn his face toward Caroline and give her peace. Colby Patrick Harmoning. The Lord bless Colby and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on Colby and be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Colby and give him peace. <coughs> Haven Alexis Howes. The Lord bless Haven and keep her. The Lord make his face shine on Haven. Be gracious to her. Lord, turn his face toward heaven and give her peace. Robert Caleb Newton.
The Lord bless Caleb and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on Caleb and be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Caleb and give him peace. <laughs> Angel, Jessica, Mashla, Paul. The Lord bless Angel and keep her. The Lord make his face shine on Angel and be gracious to her. The Lord turn his face toward Angel and give her peace. Lily Marie Ragland. The Lord bless Lily and keep her. The Lord make his face shine on Lily and be gracious to her. The Lord turn his face toward Lily and give her peace. Madeline Jade Revis. Bless Maddie and keep her. The Lord make his face shine on Maddie and be gracious to her. The Lord turn his face toward Maddie and give her peace. Jacob Brandon Sledge. The Lord bless Jacob and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on Jacob and be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Jacob and give him peace. William Jackson Smith. The Lord bless Jackson and keep him. The Lord makes his face shine on Jackson and be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Jackson and give him peace. Colin Simpson Stewart. The Lord bless Colin and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on Colin and be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Colin and give him peace. Bradley Alexander Thompson. Lord bless Alex and keep him. Lord make his face shine on Alex and be gracious to him. Lord make his turn his face toward Alex and give him peace. James Charles Arlen White. The Lord bless Jimmy and keep him. The Lord make his face shine on Jimmy. Be gracious to him. The Lord turn his face toward Jimmy and give him peace. In the songbook number seven oh four. 704. And again, if you're not familiar, this is a kind of four part the alto start. And then, secondly, we've got the basses, and then third, the tenors, and last, the soprano. So, if you're an alto, one of the ladies, in fact, all ladies might want to sing the first line there. And so, the first three times. Yeah. <laughs> 
Gates. I want to say what an honor that it is to be asked to have this part in this year's baccalaureate services and what an honor it has been being a part of this class's senior year at RCA. You guys have made it or almost made it just about right. We have had a great time in Bible class this year, at least I have, uh, whether it has been surveying the story of God or talking about discipleship and what it means to walk with Jesus or discussing the finer points of ethics and what we're going to do with poor fat Freddie. May you rest in peace. Or pondering the meaning of life in Ecclesiastes, pursuing the wisdom of God in Proverbs, go to the ant, you sluggard, one of my favorites, or talking about how God has shaped each of us for his purposes, or whether it has been introducing some of you for the first time to the wit and wisdom of Andy Griffith. Don't be so sensitive, Colby. Or unpacking the finer points of Star Trek theology, the good of the many, right? We have had a great time, or at least I have. Uh, and I want to thank you for letting me be a part of this senior year. I have tried to share with you from God's word some of the things that I have found to be most helpful in my walk with the Lord, and especially at this point in your journey. And I hope it's helped. You guys have, uh, well, an experienced educator once shared with me uh, s some great advice when it came to preparing her lesson plans. And I realize, uh, Ms. Hampton, I have not been real great about that uh, lesson planning. But she said, when it came to preparing for class, she asked herself four questions. Number one, what do I want my students to know? What information do I need to share with them? What are the most important things to take away from this lesson? What do I want for them to remember? The second thing, what do I want my students to feel? We realize that sometimes feelings, emotions can, can distract us in the education process, but, but good teachers know how to impart lessons that impact the heart as well as the head. So what do I want my students to feel? The third question, what do I want my students to do? Uh, knowing is great and feeling is wonderful, but what good is it if our students don't do anything with the knowledge that they have acquired? What do I want my students to do? 
But it's the fourth question that I think is probably the most important. The fourth question is this. Who do I want my students to be? Who do I want them to be? Or more importantly, who does God want for them to be? I think that's the most important question that you guys could come away with, that you guys could ask yourself this morning, this afternoon. Who does God want me to be? You're all 17, turning 18. You've been in school for 13 plus years. You've done lots of homework, or at least had lots of it assigned to you. <laughs> You've acquired lots of knowledge. You have lots of experiences under your belt. And I know you're all thinking about what you're going to do and where you're going to go. And we do that to you as parents and grandparents because that's what we ask, isn't it? Well, what are you thinking about doing next year? Where are you going to go? What do you want to do in life? And those are important questions. But this afternoon, I want you to ask yourself, what sort of person do I want to be? I think that's the million dollar question. And I want to give you, you know me, I want to give you a piece of it towards an answer. A piece towards an answer for you. So the Apostle Paul, I taught this morning in worship, has always been one of my heroes. As you know, Paul was a prolific writer, writing much of our New Testaments. Wrote letters to various churches, Romans, Corinthians, Thessalonians. But Paul, you know, wasn't writing to buildings. He wasn't writing to organizations. He was writing to people. He was writing to, to brothers and sisters with whom he had ministered. Many of whom he had preached the gospel to and had been privileged to baptize them into Christ. He knew them. And I, I imagine that as he wrote that the names and the faces of the people to whom he wrote would flash across his, his mind's eye as, as he wrote instruction to them. Because he knew them and he loved them. And in those churches were the men and women, the young people that he had shared meals with, that he had sat with beside the fire and visited with, people he had shared Jesus with. These were people he knew and he loved. And so he writes almost as a, as a father to his children. A, a father in the faith to those he loved. For example, to the churches in Galatia, he wrote this. My dear children. Excuse me. For whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Now, your mothers may question whether or not Paul really understood the pains of childbirth. But it goes to how Paul thought of those to whom he was writing. He, was, he thought of them as his children. They were his sons and his daughters, like Timothy, to whom he would write, Fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Like a father encouraging his son or his daughter to use the gifts God has given them. In the kingdom. To develop them. To watch them grow. Paul thought of them as his children. And his desire was for them to grow. And to develop. To mature into the fullness of Christ. To be like Jesus. He wrote to the Romans. He said for those God foreknew. He also predestined. To be conformed to the likeness of his son. That he might be the firstborn among, among many brothers. I like how Max Lucado put it one time. He said, he wrote, God loves you just the way you are. Just where you are. But he loves you too much to leave you there. He wants you to become just like Jesus. That's God's desire for us. What sort of person do I want to be? I want to be as much like Jesus. As I can possibly be. And that's my desire for each of you. To grow and to become as much like Jesus. As God will enable you. If there's a thread that has run through my senior Bible class. For however many years it's been now. It's been this. 
It's been this. God wants you to grow and to become as much like Jesus as he will enable you to. Knowledge is great. We need to know stuff. You need to know stuff. You do. You need to know math and English. You, you need to know something of how the world works. Science. History. You need to know stuff. Feelings are great. Uh, feelings are great. It's important that we feel deeply. Sometimes God places upon our hearts a burden for a great cause or, or a burden for a particular people. And, and God uses our feelings sometimes to move us to do great things. And doing great things is wonderful as well. Education is worthless if we don't use what we know. James said, don't just listen to the word and deceive yourselves, but do what it says. Actions are important. But more importantly than any of those things is who we become. Who will you be? Will we be like Jesus? Growing and maturing into the virtue and the character of Jesus. I want to suggest to you real quickly this afternoon three things that that I hope you'll remember, at least in essence, three things that, I, that, that are going to be helpful for you as you enter into this, this next chapter in your life, because becoming like Jesus and growing in virtue and character doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen by accident. The first the first suggestion I'd make to you, first piece of advice is this. Make room for the Spirit of God in your life. Make room for Him. Spiritual formation, which is what we're talking about here, doesn't happen by accident. It doesn't just happen because you decide you want it to happen. It happens when the Holy Spirit comes in and changes your heart. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and he said, We who with unveiled faces reflect the Lord's glory are being changed, transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. It comes from the spirit. It comes from the Lord. But the spirit doesn't work in your life unless you give him space to. Which is why I say make room for him. Being changed into the likeness and virtue of Jesus is as much about emptying your heart of those things that pull you away and lead you away from God as it is pursuing the things that bring you near to God. And that's the second thing. Number one, make room for the Spirit of God in your life. And number two, Always keep on pursuing a relationship with him, with God. I used to have a gentleman in our church many years ago and looked at me quizzically whenever I would talk about having a relationship with God or knowing God. Those just weren't terms that he was familiar with. He was a very godly gentleman. I, I admired greatly. But, but when he thought of God, God was someone to to please or someone to obey, which is right, which is right and true. But he didn't think of God as someone to know. Someone to have a relationship with, but he is in the Old Testament. Abraham was described as a friend of God. There's language in the scriptures and particularly the New Testament, the language of drawing near to God. James would say, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We develop a relationship with God very much like we develop relationships with one another by spending time together, by hanging out with each other. So as you think about college as you think about this next step or where, wherever the Lord is taking you and where, wherever you go and whatever you do, all the time you're going to spend with friends, all the time you're going to spend going to classes, all the time you're going to <clears throat> spend in the library studying. Don't leave out the most important time you can spend. And that's time with God. He wants, he wants you to know Him. He wants to know you. 
And He wants to be known by you. Pursue Him through the ideas, the things we've talked about in class this year, through prayer, through Bible study, through worship, through serving together. Find ways to pursue a relationship with God. These are the practices that draw you near to the heart of God so that He can work on yours. Make room for the Spirit of God in your life. Always pursue a relationship with God. And number three, find your people. You probably heard me say it many times. Wherever you are going, wherever God is taking you, whether it's the workplace or school, find your people. You know what I mean? It is very rare that spiritual formation happens in isolation. Spiritual formation happens in community. It happens in the midst of people who encourage one another daily. I want you guys to look around you. Go ahead. It's okay. Look around you. Not just at your friends next to you, but behind at the great cloud of witnesses, the parents and grandparents and aunts and uncles and friends and church friends, brothers and sisters who've come to cheer you on today. Spiritual formation happens in community and through relationships. Friends matter. Who you choose to surround yourself with has an impact on who you become. Always remember that. When you get to wherever it is that's next for you, wherever the Lord takes you, He will put people in your life who will continue to be that for you. And that is our, our prayer as parents is that God will surround you with those people. Look for them. Open your eyes. Find them. Embrace them. Spend time with them. Share your story with them and listen to theirs. Give and receive encouragement through those relationships just as you have with those who are sitting next to you. Find your people. It is going to be so important for you. We all need people. We all need people that we can lean on, people who will be there for us, people who will pray for us, who will spur us on to good things and towards a deeper relationship with God. Find your people, be it in churches, campus ministries, Bible study groups, dorm in the dorm. Find your people. Because there will be people who won't be an encouragement to you, people who will lead you in other directions. Be careful who you choose to surround yourself with. I have been so very thankful that you have had that with one another, with one another. Wherever you go, always find your people. Again, I want to thank you. You guys, I think are one of the finest classes that Riverside has ever seen. Miss Whitney the other day shared with us <clears throat> How much money you guys have been awarded. Fantastic. We, we, we talked about, we all saw on awards day, how many awards and accolades that you guys have earned in all the places that you're going. And it's awesome. And we're so proud, but that's not what I'm talking about. You guys have a love for God, for the things of God. That has been so encouraging to watch. I have watched... Some of you worship with eagerness at the edge of the Grand Canyon. I have watched you serve with kindness down at Hands of Mercy. I have watched you lead at school with integrity and with character. And I'm so proud of all of you. I am so glad that... I'm so proud of you. I'm proud that Michael has had friends like you. And I'm glad to call you mine as well. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Pray with me. Father God, I thank you so much for these young people. I thank you for the blessing that they have been to my life. I'm thankful for the 
blessing that they are to each other. Father, I do pray that wherever you will take them next in life, that they will always make room for you. Father, that they will always pursue a relationship with you and that they will always embrace the people that you are going to place in their life to continue to walk with and encourage them in this walk with you. Father, I pray your blessings, your richest blessings uh, over each one of them this, this hour. And Father, for the time to come, Father, we celebrate with them. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. In our psalm books, number one. Number one, our God is alive. We'll sing first and fourth person. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He did the skies with heavenly hue and framed the worlds with his great mind. There is a God. sing this and then Dr. Rushing will dismiss us in prayer. <coughs> I stand to praise you but I fall to my knees my spirit is willing but my flesh pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Jesus Christ, 
our Messiah, your Son. Father, we're so grateful for this occasion. And Father, we pray that our graduates will feel the, the love that they are surrounded with. Father, we're so grateful that in your infinite wisdom, that you in the very beginning created the home. And Father, we're so grateful for parents who have prioritized their faith in such a profound way to care for their children, to sacrifice for their children, to love their children, to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of you. Father, what a gift this is. And we pray that our students will not take this valuable gift for granted. Father, we pray for their futures. We pray that you give them a vision of their future. Father, we pray for their purity. We pray for their sobriety. We pray for clarity, Father. Father, we pray that, as Brother Jim stated, that they will make space in their lives for you that they will pursue that relationship with you and will be numbered among your people. Father, give them courage in the years ahead. This world has many distractions, many pitfalls, many temptations. And Father, we pray that you would fortify their hearts and their minds. We pray for that armor to be put on as they go out into this world and begin a life of independence. But Father, we pray most importantly that they will depend on you for those decisions, that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Bless them in their celebrations. Help them to see this moment for what it is, to bring joy to their hearts, to make their parents proud, and to seize this moment and to realize what it truly is. And Father, we pray your blessing, a blessing of health, a blessing of safety, a blessing of well-being. Temporally and eternally, we pray for their eternal salvation that they will know you, the one and true living God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. It's through our Savior's name that we pray, the name of Christ, which is above all names, that we pray. Amen.